And now for the end of module four, we're going to practice balancing a few chemical equations. But before we get back into it, let me ask you a question. How does a balanced chemical equation preserve the law of mass conservation? Okay, remember that in the law of mass conservation or conservation of mass, atoms and matter cannot be created or destroyed. Atoms cannot be created or destroyed. We know that from the law. A balanced chemical equation accounts for the same number of each type of atom before and after the chemical reaction. So the atoms may rearrange and they may join different molecules, but the same number of atoms are still going to be present. So that's how we can make sure that matter is not created or destroyed. Uh, also before we practice, a reminder, and you might want to take some notes about what coefficients and what the subscripts actually mean. Hopefully you've already read the module and so this is uh, well developed in your brain, but if you want to write this down, uh, actually not if, do write this down. Good job. Coefficients are those big numbers to the left of the chemical formulas. Okay, so if a chemical, chemical formula looks like this, CH4 for methane, if you have a big two out front, that is the coefficient, okay? Uh, it tells how many molecules. The molecule itself is CH4, one carbon with four hydrogen atoms around that carbon. We're gonna talk about shapes of molecules coming up. Stay tuned. Uh, this is the actual molecule, so the two out front tells us that in the reaction, there are two CH4 molecules. They're not connected together, there are just two that are both present. Just like two eggs in a recipe. If the eggs aren't connected together, it's not like you have twin eggs or anything, but you have two of them present. When there is no coefficient out front, if there was no two here, it is assumed or understood that that means that there is one molecule. And when you are balancing equations, this is the number that you can change. Change to balance equation. So you can change and you can manipulate the coefficients out front to show how many molecules are present. My son is dancing for me in the background. I had to shush him. Uh, subscripts, on the other hand, subscripts are the little numbers uh, on the lower right, or, and they're in the chemical formula. Okay, so looking back up here to CH4, methane, the subscript is uh, the little four right there. The subscript tells how many of an atom are in the molecule. There is no subscript, as you can see, for the carbon right here, which means that there is one carbon present. We know that chemists can't be bothered, bothered to write that little one in there, so that is just understood. Okay? There is a subscript for after the H, meaning that there are four hydrogen atoms. This is also where having those first 20 elements on the beloved periodic table is going to be necessary because you will just need to know what carbon is and how you write carbon, okay? Uh, tell us how many of an atom are in each molecule. And finally, the subscripts, we do not change, okay? If it gives you an equation that you are supposed to balance, you cannot uh, change the subscript because then you're changing the actual molecule and you're changing what is there, okay? All right, those are the notes before we get started and next we're going to do a couple examples. All right, back at the end of module four, this is video 4E, I erased my letter there. Um, it's the last video for module four and we are gonna practice balancing an equation. So let's do example 4.1 together. In your book, it's on page 121. Determine whether or not the following equation is balanced. Okay, we have two HCl plus CABr2. Okay, now also in your book, you're going to see that the chemical equations include the state of matter that the compound is in. For example, after HCl, it says AQ, which means aqueous, which means it's dissolved in uh, water. 
you don't have to include those states of matter for me, okay? Uh, if the problem tells you that you need to, then you need to go ahead and do it, but if it doesn't say so, then you don't have to rewrite that part. Okay, 2HCl plus CABr2 yields 2HBr plus C 2 CACl2. Okay, so that is example 4.1, how they have set it up for you. Now we have to figure out if it's balanced or not. So what we need to do is we need to take a look at what atoms are present in the reaction, the reactant side of the equation, and the product side of the equation, and make sure that they match up, that there are the same numbers of atoms of each type. Okay, so let's start with the first element that's there, which is hydrogen. So we're going to count out how many hydrogen atoms there are on the reactant side. So on the reactant side, I this is how I do it. I put an H colon. Okay, now remember, HCl is the molecule. I'll just kind of put a dotted line around it. The two out front means that there are two HCl molecules present. So if you can imagine, here's HCl molecule and here's an HCl molecule. Okay, so how many hydrogens are there? That's right, there are two. They're not connected together, but there are two that are present. So there's two hydrogens over here. How about on this side? For the product side, let's stay with hydrogen. Same thing over here. We have a hydrogen bromide uh, compound, and there are two of those molecules present. So there are two hydrogens. So the hydrogen, at least, is balanced. Okay, let's move to the next one. Cl, chlorine. Okay, how many chlorines are there? There are also two. Remember, there are two HCl molecules, so there's one, two chlorines. Over on the right-hand side of our equation, the product side, we have two CaCl2 molecules. So a CaCl2 molecule would look something like this. Maybe Cl is attached on both sides. Again, we'll get to the shapes later. So here's one of them. One of the molecule has two chlorines, but we have two of the molecules as told to us by the coefficient out front. So we have another CaCl2. So how many chlorines altogether? One, two, three, four. Okay, now the other way that you can do this is you can take the little two, which is a subscript for chlorine, and multiply it by the coefficient. So two times two is four, okay? or picture it in your, in your head and add it up that way. So over on the product side, we have four chlorines. Okay, so at this point, we don't even have to continue on because the example, the question was, is the equation balanced? The answer is no, it is not balanced because there are two chlorines over here and four over here. Okay, let's try another one. goes my marker. Okay, this one I believe is also in example 4.1. Am I doing one in 4.1? Yes, I am. Okay, so we have six CO2, six carbon dioxide molecules, plus six water molecules yield C6H12O6 plus six oxygen molecules, okay? I just wanna point out, first of all, that on the product side, it is possible for one element, in this case, in this case oxygen, to be present in two different molecules. So we have to remember that when we're counting up oxygens, that we count up the oxygens in this molecule and in this molecule for the both products. All right, let's start with, I just usually start with the first element that's listed in the equation, uh, C, carbon. On the reactant side, we have, according to the coefficient out front, six. In my head, I could multiply six times that invisible little one subscript right there. So again, six times one is six. So there's six carbons on the left. 
There's no other carbons present here. So over on the product side, the, subs, the coefficient out front is not there, so it's one. But this time, carbon has a little subscript, six. So there are six carbon atoms on this side. Okay, so the carbon is balanced. Next up is oxygen. Oxygen is present in CO2 with two atoms. And there are six of these molecules total. So six times two is 12. So we have 12 oxygens here, but we also have oxygens in the water molecule, okay? There are six water molecules. Each molecule has one oxygen. So six times one is six. So we have 12 from here plus six from the water molecules equals 18 oxygens on the reactant side. Moving over to the product side, oxygen in the first compound, there are six of them, plus in the O2, remember oxygen is one of those, one of those diatomic, um, oh no, what's the name of it? Anyway, Okay, diatomic molecules that it likes to exist as a twin, remember? So you're never going to see just the O. It's going to be O2. Um, so we have O2 here, and we have six O2 molecules present. So six times two is 12. So again, we have six plus 12 equals 18 total oxygens. So the oxygens ma match up. The oxygens are balanced. Next, we have hydrogen. And this will be the last element that we have to do. That's all that's left is hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen is present here in the water molecule. There are two hydrogens in each molecule and there are six molecules. So six times two is 12 hydrogens on the reactant side. And on the product side, there's only one of this large molecule. And in that large molecule, there are 12 hydrogen atoms. So 12 over here, 12 and 12. The hydrogen is balanced. Friends, I have two more examples that I want to share with you, and I did it again. I ran out of time. I have to keep these videos only 15 minutes. I'm already at 12 minutes. So while I said this was going to be the last video for Module 4, um, I don't feel like filming it over again. So never mind what I said before. This is the second to last video for Module 4. There will be one more video 4F where I will do two additional examples where we're actually having to balance the equations.